Today we're going to learn a better way of using reverb. Reverb on a bus or sending your reverb to a bus. It's going to let you have more control over reverb throughout your project. It will save time in your workflow throughout your project. And it can also take some of the CPU workload off. Let's dive in to see how we do it. And I'll point out those areas of why we're doing it along the way, along with some of the more advanced things you can do by having your reverb on a separate track. So in this project, I'm just gonna go ahead and just play the vocal and mute uh, anything else that I'm using. And to set up reverb as a send, instead of putting it on your plugin strip here as an insert, you'll instead go to the send. We'll choose a bus here. And that is going to automatically create an auxiliary track where I will then put my reverb. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this to stereo because I want my reverb to be in stereo instead of mono. And I also want that reverb, or uh, I want that track to have that stereo effect because this send, when I hold down that button, I have options of post pan, post fader, pre fader. I'm always going to select post pan on this. This will depend a little bit on what you're using it for. But what this lets me do is if I have a whole stack of harmony vocals and they're already panned left or right, that send is going to obey that panning by the time it gets to this stereo track. If I had had this as a mono track and I'd sent a track that was panned left to my track that's going to be reverb here, it will just appear like it's mono and you kind of lose that stereo width that you got from uh, from panning everything left or right. So unless you want your reverb right down the middle for everything, set it as stereo and make sure you're at post pan. Great. So now that we have that track set up, let's go ahead and drop in our reverb plugin. I'm just going to do any reverb for now. We'll make it pretty dramatic just so we can uh, hear what's going on. And you'll want to set this at 100% wet and 0% dry. And that's because we're going to handle the reverb completely separately from the rest of the track so we can really dial it in. Now, when I play just my track here, we'll be cranking up this send until you can hear the reverb. Cause you in that jacket makes me feel something fantastic And you in that dress got me throwing hashtag blessed Whatever's hanging up in your closet does Great, so you can definitely hear that reverb now The next thing we'll do is just show how you can get more control of that reverb By having it on the separate track as opposed to an insert So, after my reverb I want to tuck this a little better into the mix. So I'm going to put my EQ right after it. And then I'm just going to high and low pass it. Uh, I'm not going to be too picky right now on, on what that is, but we'll just let those mids through. And now when we take a listen to it. Cause you in that jacket makes me feel something fantastic And you in that dress got me throwing hashtag blessed Whatever's hanging up in your So now it's tucked back further into my mix And yes, that is something I could have done by using some of the built-in EQs in the reverbs themselves However, I'm already really familiar with my channel EQ plugin here So by having it on a separate track where I can just affect the reverb that we're getting, I am able to really dial it in with tools that I already know. Another more advanced thing you can do to get some more control here is compression. So by controlling the dynamics of the reverb separately, I can either make that more consistent throughout the entire song. Um, so if we go ahead and just... Cause you in that jacket makes me feel something fantastic and you in that dress got me throwing hashtag blessed whatever's hanging up in your closet does so we can make that reverb more consistent overall or something that i do much more often is to side chain the reverb with my vocals so i'm just going to take my main vocal bus but you could just take an individual lead vocal track there select it as the side chain for my compressor. And now, instead of looking at the dynamics of the reverb audio overall, it's going to look to my vocal track to drive when that reverb gets pressed down. 
Cause you in that jacket makes me feel something fantastic And you in that dress got me throwing hashtag blessed Whatever's hanging up in your closet doesn't matter Cause if I'm honest it's not what So the benefit of this, we'll play the end of the phrase so that you can hear the reverb come back It's how you wear it It's how you wear it there, I made that more drastic so you could hear that kind of come back after the end of the phrase um, because the once the vocal is done, it lets the reverb pop back up. So what this lets you do is use a little bit more reverb, but it gets out of the way really quickly whenever that lead vocal comes in so that it's not cluttering up your lead vocal. The next thing that we can do here for more control on our reverb is automating the reverb. So... Here I just have my uh, my auxiliary strip right now. It's not yet a track in my timeline, so I'm going to go ahead, right-click that, and just create track. We'll name this verb tutorial, and now I'm able to automate this plugin or automate anything on this track just like I would otherwise. So let's say that I want to do a really uh, kind of harsh cutoff. One way that we can do that is throwing a gain plugin on there. I always automate gain instead of volume. And uh, let's go ahead and just bring up our gain automation. And instead of just taking it down completely at the end, we'll do a little bit of a gradual build off here, and then we'll just really cut it off at the end. So. Here's what we've got. Ever hanging up in your closet doesn't matter cuz if I'm honest it's not what you wear. It's how you wear it. So now it's got reverb throughout it and then it really cuts off uh, just at the end. And that just lets you in different scenarios maybe dry up the mix versus bring it back to a, a more wet mix without needing to mess with the actual sends or effects on your um on your actual track. It would also let us bring it back really quickly. So instead of just automating the the uh, the send knob, what we can do here, just to show you, is it's, it's still getting that reverb input, it's just not outputting it anymore. So I'm still building up all this reverb, if you will. Um, so when I hear this- in your closet, doesn't matter, cause if I'm honest, it's not what you wear. It's how you wear it. So it kind of burst back into the scene there because the reverb's still happening, we're just not letting it come through with that gain automation. The last thing that we can do that I'll go over here at least is uh, control your overall reverb across all of your project. Um, this this kind of ties into the, the next point of being able to save time across your whole workflow. Um, so let's say that now that I've done reverb on one of my tracks, I want to also do it on my doubles. So. We'll look at some of these and I'll just turn off all the other effects on here for now. And then on all of my doubles, I'll bring up the mixer view just so it's a little more clear. Uh, on all my doubles, I also want to add reverb. So I can just in one couple clicks there, uh, drop the same reverb on all of them. And this is gonna be way better than copying and pasting the same reverb plugin as an insert on all of them, especially when maybe I needed to tweak the reverb a little bit and then I have to go and copy and paste them all again. I know that's what I did when I was getting started using Reverb, and this ends up just being such a time saver long-term. I can use the same Reverb for all of my vocals and just send different amounts uh, to that bus. For example, if I want these doubles to you know, be relatively loud but not send a lot of Reverb, I just bring that down. In And then even if my harmonies are not as loud in the mix, I can still crank up their send knob to send a lot of reverbs so that it's more of like a pad effect from those harmonies. So that's those are the kind of controls that I can get by having it on a bus. And, and once I am using reverb across all of my tracks like that, so let's go ahead and uh, just hear all these. Cause you in that jacket makes me feel something fantastic And you in that dress got me throwing hashtag blessed what So I've got reverbs going, reverb sends to the same reverb bus going from all of these And if I want to hear my mix 
wetter or uh, drier, all I have to do is I'll bring up my uh, reverb strip here. So this is my reverb one. I can just adjust the gain overall instead of needing to tweak every single send knob. So if I if I'm wondering what my mix sounds like with more reverb, cause you in that jacket makes me feel something fantastic, and you in that dress got me throwing hashtag blessed. Whatever's hanging up in your closet doesn't matter, cause if I'm honest, it's not what I'm able to affect all of that reverb just with one fader on the reverb bus track that we created. The uh, other point that I made earlier is that it can save some of the load on your CPU. And that's just due to the fact that instead of using a reverb, <clears throat> oftentimes <clears throat> the same reverb on all of our tracks, we're just sending a copy of that audio with our send here to one reverb. And if I'm doing, you know, 10 vocal tracks with harmonies and doubles and ad libs and everything, that is just one reverb plugin instead of 10. So that's a quick way to help you uh, avoid some of those system overload messages that uh, I'm often plagued with. So um, just just a, one of the benefits of using reverb on a bus as opposed to as a plugin on every single track. That covers some of the main reasons why you should consider using reverb on a bus as on a sending your audio to that bus instead of using reverb as a plugin insert. You're not going to need to use it every single time. Sometimes it does make sense to put reverb directly on the track itself, like when you're uh, doing some specific sound design things or that reverb doesn't match with any of the other audio you're trying to affect. Um, but oftentimes, especially with vocals, it's a huge time saver and it's just way easier to set up than dealing with all of those separate reverbs. Thanks for watching this video on reverb. If you found it helpful, just let me know in the comments or let me know if there's any other topics you'd like to see covered. I've just started trying out doing some of these more tutorial style videos. Um, I use mostly my own music from Cradle Cat as examples that I'm walking through. Um, so if you like the tutorials, if you like my music, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and please let me know or let me know what else you'd like to see.